The WB is a smaller network so far. Do they let you name it? Well, yeah, if you write it. And, oh, okay. You know, if you come well, up with a show. Well, tell us about it. You, uh, well, I play, uh, it's, uh, I play a guy that was married to a talk show host, let's say Oprah, mm -hmm. very successful, have uh, two kids, two daughters, 13 and 8, and we get a divorce. I'm the producer of the show. And, and uh, you know, it's an ugly divorce, and I have to go back to St. Paul, Minnesota, from L.A., and try to find a job because I can't get one in L.A. Right. And so I had to take my two daughters back there because I have them during the school year. And uh, I, I started a station that has a, uh, I'm going to produce a show, uh, Ed McMahon stars, uh, is a, a talk show host, mm -hmm. a more, uh, uh, Breakfast with Charlie is the name of the show. It's like a local show. Yeah, but he's been doing it 43 years. <laughs> he's a legend. Basically, they have me come back there to kind of uh, get rid of him. <laughs> and then they'll fire me and, you know, I'll be the jerk from out of town. And uh, I go back there and I, I worked for Ed. Uh, his character when I was a kid, Moda's Yard and stuff, worked around that station. So I go back to the same place, and a lot of my old friends that I grew up with are there, and you know have to start over. And my ex-wife's show is on is the number one show on our station, right? So she's on the monitors, and she bad mouths me at the end of every show. Well, uh, tell us uh, tell us how the process works. I mean, do well, you, 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 you think, come up with the idea yeah. and then shop it around? I came up with it and took it. Uh, this is the place I took it. You know, uh, the Universal uh, asked uh, Universal Television said we'd like you to do or like to sign you to try to develop a show, and uh, I thought that well I'll give that a shot, and I so I got this one idea, so we went to uh, Warner Brothers and the WB and and I pitched it and they said great, and uh, then you then, I, then I, you wrote it yeah. And let me uh, let's uh, let's get some history here for a second because uh, most people know who you are yeah. by now. But uh, I guess your story is I, I don't really know your complete story. Right. So I mean, you, you don't read the trades. Uh, no, you started off as a stand-up. I know that. Right. I started off. I grew up in Iowa, and in, in 1983, I moved to Minneapolis to try to s do stand-up comedy after I left the University of Iowa. And, um, and now, how old were you then uh, I when was you moved to 23? Uh, all right. It, and you started just uh, the club circuit? Yeah, yeah. I started, I had, you know, had a job, too. I was a bar back and a bouncer and stuff and, you know, started doing the open stages. And, and then after a year or so, I was able to travel a little bit and then support myself. And I lived there five years and moved out to L.A. in 1988 to uh, write on the Roseanne show. Who I, Roseanne, who I'd met in 83 when she was traveling, uh, just started doing comedy herself and was uh, one of her first road gigs and uh, was the headliner and I was the or middle act. All right, now, had you uh, started a relationship with her back then? Or uh, well, we were friends, you know. I mean, this is before she moved to L.A. You right. Know? And uh, we were uh, friends fast. You know, we hit it off. We liked each other. And, and you know, she uh, would come back and perform or we'd go on the road and write stuff together. But you uh, you started as a writer on the show before right. you began a relationship uh, yes. with her in that capacity. Yeah, of a, a more of a personal relationship. Yeah, yeah, intimate. because that's uh, it's you know it's not common knowledge. Yeah, uh, uh, most people assume that you guys met up, had a relationship, and right. then she brought you onto the right. show. No. All right, so you 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 earned your way onto the show. Well, I think so, and uh, you know it was a great opportunity that she didn't have to give me. Right. But, um, you know, after I was there, I. Kind of figured out what I was doing and uh, worked my way up. And, you know, this show's a lot about talking about uh, surviving adverse experiences in life. And right. you, when you were up here last time, you talked a little bit about some some tremendous right. stuff you had to get, dig mm -hmm. through. And uh, well, I you know I I feel like uh, everybody goes through all these adverse experiences. Was not true. That, well, a lot of people, you <laughs> yeah, know, everyone the sexual but stuff and when. They were kids, perhaps, and, and uh, alcoholism and drug abuse and all this stuff. And it's really what you do, and, and you work on it and then put it behind you, hopefully, or turn it around. Well, most people in the industry, especially uh, the talent, especially the comedians, especially the female comedians, I've been uh, finding out, yeah. uh, a lot of the motivation for them going uh, the direction they went career-wise is uh, because they uh, suffered some horrible atrocity. Right. Uh, a lot of alcoholism, some molestation, right. uh, what have you. And uh, it's not a coincidence that they're now up on stage uh, performing that and working it out that way. Well, so. a, lot, a lot of people don't choose to get treatment, though. No, they yeah. don't, and, and that's you, bad. And you, and you had, yeah, yeah, I've been clean and sober for uh, seven years and six and seven months now. What was your uh, drug of choice? Uh, booze and cocaine. And, know, uh, I tried them all, but I, I like those the best. And what finally got you into treatment? Well, uh, it was, uh, I realized that I couldn't stop, and I'd ruined, uh, at the time I was engaged to Roseanne, and uh, we were getting ready to get married, and she canceled the wedding, and she... Uh, uh, you know, I'd been in rehab before and talked my way out of there, and she canceled the wedding, and I lost my job, and and uh, everything was 
falling apart, and I'd finally admitted to her, you know, I'd been lying to her and saying I wasn't doing it. I just couldn't sleep for five days, and it was really, a, you know, it was I was a bad but character. No it's, the, no, it's the usual story. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, not an, it's not you're a bad person. Right. It's the usual history of addiction. Right, addiction but and so people. I went into rehab this time, the last time, and I, you know, was basically there to kind of, you know, get it all together so I could, you know, get my relationship back and my job and, and people would maybe like me again. And, and But I was there, on the eighth day I was there, um, something weird happened, and uh, I just, I start, I was feeling good, and, and I thought, well, maybe I deserve to feel good. It's kind of nice. And and so, um, you know, it was a situation where we definitely were not getting married, and, and we talked on the phone, and I, and I said to her, you know, I love you. We'll, you know, we'll always be friends and everything, but... You know, I think I'm going to do this for myself, and uh, and then she said, of course, well, we're getting married. You know, if I'd have known it was that easy, I would have said it, to, you know, in the previous eight days. <laughs> you know, but it really, it, it was good, and I've worked on it every day since. And uh, so you, you go to meetings and oh, uh, yeah. do the 12 steps and all that? 12-step program, yes. And uh, what have you replaced it with? Are you into, like, uh, a new cigars, skydiving or anything? Uh, no, no. I, uh, you know, uh, I've always been a compulsive eater. And uh, that's something I work on. I, I work out a lot now, and I've lost a lot of weight. And and uh, but that's still there. I mean, sometimes I feel like uh, you know I don't have booze, drugs. Uh, yeah, the idea, Adams, you, you don't replace feelings with things yeah, like thrill seeking, thrill seeking, yeah, and drugs. The, right, theoretically, you don't. But we all know uh, when you as soon as there's a ten minute break at AA meeting, it's uh, chain smoking and right. coffee pot yeah, drinking. Th that's because people with this disease are biologically prone to seek activation of that part of their brain. Right. But it doesn't mean they have to do it every time they have a feeling. And, and you should, you know, the first year I was sober, I, you know, my sponsor said, "Hey, you know, uh, eat whatever you want, do whatever it takes." He says, "I smoked, you know." Marlboros, no filters. I, I did what, whatever. And so for the first year, I gained about 80 pounds, but I was sober. Right. I really, I mean, I didn't drink or use. And then the second year, I started working on that. Right. And, you know, that's something I work on now. It's hard not to eat when you got a bunch of money now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Especially, you know, you think, what do you got to live for if you can't eat? <laughs> yeah, I know. You know. Like, it, I'm sure when you're, uh, you had a lot of years where you're struggling. Right. And it was pretty much uh, macaroni and cheese for the fourth night in a row, and you could right. do without. But you could still say, you could still say, stay fat doing that. Trust me. <laughs> There's a lot of fat, poor people out there. It is true. I'm so, always, yeah. always amazed by that. I think it's that surplus cheese. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, uh, we'll go to the phones, and uh, Tom, you just uh, jump in. You know how the show goes. Yeah, uh, have absolutely. a good time, and uh, we'll get uh, more more into you uh, as we move on. Kyle, 23. Hi. Hey. Tom, you uh, stole the show on True Lies and uh, Nine Months. Oh, I just thanks. wanted to let you know that. Thank you. Yeah, I uh, I second that. And Adam. Yes. I wanted to let you know it's, it's high time we had somebody in the media who's uh, going to step up as a spokesperson for masturbation. Damn, damn. I've been on 10 proud years of it, and I think that, you know how they give people, like, their silver wedding and their golden wedding? And right. History? They ought to come up with something like that for masturbators. Do you agree? Yeah. It'd be, it'd be a great thing. Uh, I was a uh, nominee for the, uh, for the silver hamper uh, medallion uh, last uh, three years running. I, I lost out. But, uh, yeah, there should be some sort of uh, plaque well, went, uh, with, with a bullseye. Not on. a ring because that would hurt. <laughs> yeah, something. You, you put it on your other you know, hand. The thing about it is you talked about replacing addictions. You know, obviously there's a lot of sex addicts out there. And that's, a, you know, a temptation absolutely for everybody that that is sober or tries to get sober or whatever. I mean, that's, or, that's, or, a, that's a killer, right. too. That's right. But, um, uh, you know, I find that you, the masturbation thing, you know, you, you, I, you're on the road, you, you're doing a movie out of the country for three, four months at a time, and, you know, if you got a good tape and, and uh, you know, you get, it gets you out of a little bit of trouble. Yeah, it's like uh, packing your girlfriend. And I've got, uh, <laughs> I mean, a two of them. To no. travel. See, I always do. I like the two women together. Kyle. One, one last quick comment on the masturbation thing. I want to open up the Masturbatorium, a place where uh, All right, Kyle. the world can get together and not right, spread this, disease. This, this, <laughs> you have to have too much. Well, you start that. You get a license for it and see how it does. It's he's, got a, he's got a little extra time on his hands. Yeah, uh, uh, what would you call about? Clean up, aisle five. Okay. Um, I've been around the block a few times, and I'm 23, and I, I know what to what I don't want out of dating relationships, and I was wanting to get from you, mainly Dr. Drew, since you see all these uh, weird people, um, maybe some key things to, to look out for when, when I have a prospective girlfriend. Yeah, have you have you chosen bad people in the past? Is that what happens? It sure is. And, and, and I don't mean bad, but I mean relationships that end up bad. No, Are you masturbating right now? Yeah. I, that's just, is he? No, okay. I, uh, I think I wore myself out. I'm going to take a night off. Do you have any history of abuse? Have you lived through that? Absolutely not. not. No, no but do you, do you tend to choose people who are from that history? Well, I get a lot of girls with uh, with babies, and I think that that's 
never, it's never been a good thing for me. Is there an alcoholism or addiction in your family? No. Okay. Um, thing to watch out for is chaos and drama. People who thrive on that and need that usually are using that as some form of reaction to something not healthy. And if you're attracted to them, uh, that's trouble. To the drama part? Well, I just mean if your compass is sort of screwed up uh, in relationships, well, if you're really attracted to someone, chances are they're screwed up well, because that's what attracts you to but them. But he doesn't, he hasn't, in that little cursory interview we did, we didn't find out that he has something that typically causes an abnormal compass. Right, I'm but the I mean... the guy in the world. All yeah, right. but sometimes you're you not know, that healthy. Yeah. You wouldn't be chasing after uh, so, screwed up women. All kinds of subtle things when you're growing up: over-involved parents, under-involved parents. Uh, you know, the aggression on the part. Of, all, all kinds of things that are not guys, overt abuse. Guys can, like to be the hero. You know, if, if 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 a woman has a kid and she's on her own, you like to come in there and uh, be the hero. And if if you could do that, that's the greatest thing in the world: be a step parent. But if you can't, if it's it's you know. But you see, if you need to do that, it's because right. you don't feel good about yourself. Right. You got to come in and have a project to validate your own self worth, and that's not a good relationship. And right. um, uh, I've never dated a woman who had a child, but I'm guessing uh, they're a little more receptive. Uh, what I mean is is they're a little more enthusiastic about dating. It, you know what I'm saying? As mm. a single mother, mm. uh, because it is stigmatized in cautious, this society. Yeah. If you're a young woman, 1920, you have a, a, a two-year-old, uh, you're going to tend to um, sort of broaden your dating spectrum just mm, a little bit you more. You might be more cautious because oh, you're really looking for somebody who's good for Jesus the child. Jesus Christ, right. Drew. You see Jerry Maguire? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the same thing. There you go. All right. Uh, Drew, what are you? Uh, is this like point, counterpoint? You know I'm right here. We're just, trying, offering. We're just trying Tom out tonight to see if he'll make a good replacement. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom. Oh. Uh, Melissa, 15. Hi. Um, my boyfriend, like, touches me in places that make me feel uncomfortable and scared and stuff when we're on dates. What do you tell him? Well, I tell him to stop and he calls me like a baby and says I'm just like wimping out and stuff. So he, he demeans you. He, he, yeah. He makes you feel bad about how, yourself. How old is he? Yourself. He's 17. Uh-huh. And how long have you been going out with him? About a month. Uh, but he's your boyfriend. Yeah. And why'd you make him your boyfriend if he is up to this? Well, he didn't do that at first. Uh-huh. He didn't do it, like, the past, like, week. And, or two weeks, I guess. How much have you done with him physically? We've kissed a couple times, but we haven't, like, done anything. But he just tries touching me and stuff. And mm -hmm. if I break up with him, I'm afraid he'll, like, come after me or something. What do you mean, come after you? I don't know. It's just, like, he'll, like... Stalking me or something. No, the fact that he wants to touch you doesn't mean that he is necessarily a stalker. Did, did you have somebody violate you when you were younger in some way? Or? No. No, you haven't been physically struck no. or anything like that? Uh, no, guys will do this, okay? Uh, if this, <laughs> this is what they'll do. And you, your job is to learn how to say no, okay? And how to stand up for yourself and how not to be in situations where you have difficulty saying no. Okay. If this really makes you feel bad, you have, you must learn to stand up for yourself because it's what's right for you. What's he do when you say no? He demeans her and tells. Yeah, her. I know, but does he does he stop? No. You see, it's it's illegal well, I mean, to he, do that, by the way. So I mean, does he uh, essentially rape you? Well, not really. But he doesn't stop. No. I mean, if you physically try to get away from him, what would he do? Um. Probably, like, grab me or something. All right, so this guy's an abuser. In some fashion, yeah. I mean, at least it makes you feel like you're, you could be victimized by him. Yeah, yeah Melissa, um, pardon me, but you sound real naive and maybe even... Uh, I know you're only 15, but you sound even younger than that. Did you... Uh, you sure nothing happened to you along the way? No. You just uh, haven't had any boyfriends before this guy? Not really. Okay, this just seems... Uh, Drew, do you yeah. think there's something up well, here? Well, it may just be that she's been sheltered. I mean, it, it doesn't... It, I, I wondered if there was something up because he did, she did choose this guy. Uh, but why do you like the guy? Well, I don't anymore at first. Oh, good. Yeah, see? See how healthy over. she is? Here, here's the deal. If he does, Drew, if he I've is never not, seen Drew so excited. You scared me, Drew. If he is not concerned about how you feel, Melissa, if, the, if what he's doing makes you feel bad and that doesn't matter to him, hell with him. I just, uh, I just thought I'd let you carry the show for an eighth of a second. Macy, uh, 15. Can you believe we get paid the same amount, Tom? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, are you sure? 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, that, that would really be it if I found out he made more. Oh, Macy, 15. Hi, guys. Um, I just want to say, Dr. Drew, how do you put up with Adam all the time? Uh, it's work. <laughs> it's a job. <laughs> okay, um, my question is that um, I've never really had a boyfriend, and I'm a virgin and everything, but I met this guy in school, like, two years ago almost, and ever since I met him, I've been, like, really almost obsessive. Like, I've never been sexually attracted to anybody except him before, and he's, like, totally not interested. How old is he? He's 17, uh, 17 right now. Um, and he's not interested. No. All right, get over it. No. Move on. She won't. Of course she won't. But it's also normal and age-appropriate to be obsessed. And at least it's not, uh, you know... So somebody completely. Uh, uh, right. Some he should hook up with the guy, the last gal, right. guy, it's reverse. Yeah, he's seventeen. Yeah, it's not. Wasn't like uh, when I was fifteen and into Susan Anton pretty heavily. It's not uh, that far out of the realm of she's possibilities. Still she's still pretty hot. Oh, I know. I was no idiot even back then. All right, so he doesn't. He's not interested in you. I don't think so. Have you checked it out? No. He's seventeen. Well, why not? Because, well, like, we kind of avoid each other because he used to like me a lot, and every, and he used to, like, crush me, and it scared me because mm. I was really scared of guys. Hmm. Oh, well, he, him, if he used to like you, that's something. And then, um, but he got over me because I was so scared of him. I was, like, running away from him constantly. I was like, you know, like, stay away from me. And then he, he got over me, and ever since then I've been, like, really attracted to him. <laughs> <laughs> You wonder why this country's in so much trouble. Uh, all right, Macy, why don't you just go and uh, apologize? Uh, tell him, uh, um, you know, hormones have uh, set in. No, don't no, no, Just uh, ask right. him out to, for coffee or something. Yeah. And see if he wants to go just out. Just go up to him and, uh, as a matter of fact, let me talk to him. Do you have his phone number? I don't. All He's right. out of town. All right. He's in New York. Okay, listen, go up to him and, and say the following, Macy. Okay. Uh... I, I know we've uh, had our differences in the past, uh, and I'd like to bury the hatchet by buying you a cup of coffee. Okay. All right? Yeah, that sounds like something a 15-year-old would say. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I, that's, that's why fun. I told her to repeat you, after you have, me. You have kids, don't you? No, I, I, had, I had stepkids for five years. Do you still, you still have a relationship with them? No, no that was uh, something that the lawyers and the mother didn't want to. Really? Uh, yeah. Did the kids want to have it really continue? Really? I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. We, we had a good one. I mean, that was a, what, that, the, that was probably the hardest thing. Really? So, I mean, you yeah. fought to uh, have uh, visitation rights. Well, I would have liked to have had a relationship, but, you know, to continue to talk to to them. And yeah. one of them called me, and then uh, we had a little reconciliation uh, at one time. And the kids, it was great. The kids are, just, you know, they're like, well, at least you guys are being adults. So it's great, and you know, but. Uh, you know. So important to the kids to have that sustained relationship. Yeah, well, they're they're great kids. How old are Roseanne's kids? I suppose now. Uh, well, she has a I think a twenty four, twenty five year old, and then uh, the other kids are maybe twenty two, uh, twenty, and seventeen. But uh, they're mostly adults. Yeah, uh, I sure. mean, certainly uh, lawyers cannot uh, dictate no, whether no. they keep in but touch you gotta with somebody. What you you got you got to respect what your mom want you to do I and that, that but isn't it you know. I mean was that just sour grapes I mean was she just uh, at least in your opinion just sort of punishing you yeah no oh, okay because that's what it sounds like to me it, it's it's really sad uh, that you know things have to get, <laughs> things have to get this far in life yeah. it's amazing uh, that uh, and I'm sure uh, nobody uh, will um, will back me up on this more than you but it's amazing that the person at least uh, I've never been divorced I've never been married but I hear stories mm -hmm. I know my own parents people that were so in love uh, <laughs> that they decide to share a house together uh, get a, a joint checking account and uh, screw every uh, third night uh, now ha hate each other yeah. more than um, uh, Stalin uh, hated uh, Mussolini mm -hmm. I mean how does that y you know it's what I mean it's quite thing. ironic it could go one day be one way and the next day be totally opposite like uh boy hell, right. ha hell hath no fury right there's a person uh there you know when uh, the uh, when you look back on your life in your deathbed there's a person uh, that you were terribly in love with that you lived with uh, that you married and then there was a person who became your arch uh, enemy mm -hmm. in a uh, in a bitter bitterly uh, disputed everything with them and that was the same person right. mm, love and hate are closely aligned emotions and it, it, this throwbacks to our early development and how we feel about our parents and ourselves. All right, uh, Dr. Freud. Some people are better at it than others. Uh, about being hateful? Uh, about, yeah, about t turning, turning, you know. Uh, turning 
it, it would be hard for me. I've never been able to do it because of uh, it. Just to see, it's an unnatural thing to do what? See, to go from hating to go from loving somebody to hating them. You're not good at like vendettas. Well, it, it you know it, no, people that really no. do that with with great uh, alacrity uh, usually have particular kinds of personality issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very well, that's very true. well put, Drew. All right, that's why uh, he's the doctor, and uh, he gets uh, paid uh, ten dollars to every uh, dollar I make. Oh yes, that's at least sure. if you break it down into syllables. <laughs> All right, uh, when we come back, uh, Drew, sell the hell out of the next call. At least you could do uh, a thirteen-year-old question about yeast infections. All right, come on, come up with something better than that. All right, here's one for you, Adam. I want your opinion. This is Mark. Uh, he's getting involved with a stripper. All right, now we're talking. Tom Arnold, uh, Dr. Drew, myself, Adam Parole. The show is Loveline. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. And uh, that's enough. Uh, the Tom Show on the uh, WB Network, starting up uh, Sundays, first week in fall. Uh, sorry, first week in uh, September. Hmm. Coming up uh, just a few short months away. And we're talking about freeways. And uh, we're all fast drivers. Uh, you know, I think you can be a safe driver and a fast driver, but it always uh, pisses you off when there's some guy in front of you that's holding you up. Right. And my take on the thing is this. Um, the speed limit should be sort of a floating thing, depending on uh, a few elements. And one of them is the car that you're driving. Huh. I mean, if you got uh, some guy and he's uh, driving a, you know, 72 uh, Subaru Justy with three and a half cylinders and uh, he's got uh, Never heard of that 90 series, uh, you know, he's got shopping cart tires on right. it and the, the back is, he's, he does a little gardening on the weekend, so the back is loaded with manure <laughs> right. uh, and he's going 75, uh, that's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, with uh, Tom Arnold over here uh, driving the, uh, the Callaway Vet uh, with, <laughs> with the uh, tires that cost more more than uh, the guys Justy, just one of them that are speed rated uh, by some uh, some kraut uh, for 215 miles an hour and uh, you know speed sensitive steering, a car that's capable of right. 200 miles an hour, uh, 75 is crawling. Right. I don't think minivans should drive in the fast lane. I think a lot of times I'll see I come in on the 101 you know every day and. Boy, I tell you, it's so frustrating. First of all, people get offended if you come up behind them, and they're on the fast lane, and they're driving 65 or 55 or 60. They have got to respect the fact that they've got to get the hell out of the way. <laughs> they really do. That, that's what slow, a lot of well, it by, slows By the way, most down. of the country does that. There's a, the fast lane is either passing or passing, right. going past everybody right. else. And they get offended. But here's the way I look at it. You pretend in your mind, if you, you know, you, nobody likes people coming up behind them and they got to show you how it's done. You flash your lights, they don't do anything. Pretend that guy's on the way, he's, he's got a, he needs a liver transplant, he's on the way to the hospital, he's been beeped, then maybe you'll be able to move over or some right. sort of emergency situation. Just pretend that because that may be the case. And then get over. I don't care about people, I don't care how slow they drive in the slow lane, but just, you know, gauge it. And, right. You know, and, and just stay out of the way. And d that, that also helps for you getting offended and, and just, they'll slam on their brakes sometimes. Don't do that. They might need a liver or a heart transplant and do you know, something, you know. I mean, that's how I, I mean, I'm trying to figure out a way for these people to accept the fact that somebody's going to go blow right. by them. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Tom is speaking of uh, his chauffeur honking the horn while he's getting oral pleasure in the back of the stretch. But either way, the man is in a rush. <laughs> uh, you know what my favorite thing to do is, is uh, I hate it when I get behind somebody who will not turn right on a red. They're parked there. Oh, There's bad. no traffic coming the other way. Or when someone's just pulling out of a supermarket parking lot and they're just parked there and they're not going to pull out in the street unless uh, Caltrans <laughs> comes in and puts cones down and stops traffic. But here's the thing that's funny. It only works on a, a small percentage of the population, but it's always a good one. They will sit there and, and they will not budge. Even though there's no car in sight, they will not budge. And then traffic comes up and then you give them a toot on the horn and they will go flying out in front of a cement truck at yeah. that point because because people cannot stand to have you behind there knowing your arm with that horn. All right. Uh, Tom Arnold is here. So is Dr. Drew. And it's, uh, was this the one you sold, Drew? It's one of them. Uh, I thought we were going to talk to Mark. We'll do this one first, quick. All right. Uh, Shanna, 13. Hi. Hey. Um, I was just wondering if it was common to have a yeast infection at the uh, age of 13. You had something like that? Yeah, I've had like a, like a bunch of them, actually. And you had a doctor diagnose that that's what it was? What? Did you have a doctor look at you to make sure that's what it was? No, but like I like had like kind of like the symptoms on. Are you sexually active? No. And did you use any kind of any of the over-the-counter creams or anything like that to treat it? Well, I did once, but I like only did it like it was like a seven-day treatment, but I only did it, like once. All right. If you don't treat it completely, it's going to come back. 
right. Okay, so really all you've had is one. It just hasn't been fully fully eradicated. And, uh, yeah, it's very common for women to start oh, what, having What is the earliest yeast infection on record, Drew? Do I you don't know, know that? I, I don't know that off the top of my head, but it's usually, uh, it can begin around puberty. Uh, isn't it time for the gynolotrimin minute or something and, and where you go a, back in they history? They have a new product on the market. I watch the commercials. That's a one-day one day treatment. Is it three days? It's, well, it's, you know, and that's something, too, and I'm not talking about this gal because she's a young kid, but... Uh, I think women should be stocked up with stuff like that at home, and so it's not a surprise. Oh, I've got this. I guess I have to go to the store because every minute, every day that goes by, that, that you know that they're they have this. That's a day that maybe you won't be able to be together romantically, and I think it hurts the relationship. Right. You should uh, go down to the Price Club. Uh, right. Get, get a guy with a forklift right. and a, a fifty-gallon tub of a uh, guy Well, to... well what, you know, you should get stock up like a tampons. I mean, it's a common thing. It happens to my wife all the time. She has to go get some. We have a. What do you mean? got to go get some. I, if I knew every 30 days something was going to happen, I would go down to the Price Club. We, we've got tons of toilet paper there. I know I'm going to have to use the bathroom. Why is it like a shock? Oh, I'm sorry, we have to go over here at 7-Eleven real quick because I don't have anything. I mean, that that's ridiculous. Women buy tampons as if they're going to hit menopause any minute now. <laughs> uh, a 22-year-old woman uh, could just buy, buy them single, like uh, you buy cigarettes at the counter of the 7-Eleven. It's more the opposite, that oh. they're in denial that this is happening and don't really want to deal with it. Right, that's great. Uh, we need a fourth guy in here to comment <laughs> on why women, uh, how women purchase tampons but, and what's wrong it's with a, it. It's always amazed me how much young women, 13, young teenage women particularly, are, are freaked out by things like yeast infections. But you're common things. They're normal. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. If they are recurrent, certainly things like your blood sugar and your thyroid and your nutrition need to be assessed. But it now is easily treatable, over-the-counter medicines. They now have these ultra-rapid treatments, the, the terazole-type drugs and the monostats out but there. But it has to do with puberty, doesn't it? it? That's about when it starts to happen. It, it can start happening around then, yes. Oh, I am... Uh, do I tight am... pants have anything, seriously? Mm. <laughs> Those uh, wearing no, nylons not. or something it's, like that. It's more about the bacterial makeup of what's going on in there and things like antibiotics mm. or uh, having having sexual relationships or changing the nutrition, uh, that sort of thing, uh, activity. I, I really know nothing about the vagina. Uh, to me, it is like uh, Area uh, 51, or what is that out at Roswell? Uh, it's it's uh, I have something's going on over there. Uh, I just how don't old know. are you, and you don't know about the vagina? I'm 33. Well, you're you. Uh, I don't want to know. I, yeah. I, I really don't want to know. The vagina uh, to me is like a uh, grand piano. It's beautiful when it's mm -hmm. tuned and and uh, waxed, uh, but it can go bad, and it needs a lot of maintenance. Uh, basically, I have a kazoo. <laughs> it, it never it, it never sounds that great, but yeah. it, nothing goes wrong. Are you gay? I I could be. If yeah, you I got could a spot be. I mean, the, the way show. you're talking about the vagina, it sounds like you know that you're going. It's kind of icky sometimes. Uh, I think you should worship the vagina. I do. Oh, you do. Oh, yes. All right. It's a wonderful thing. I mean, things happen there you can't even imagine, and uh, we could never come up with. Tom uh, actually has a picture of his wife's vagina in his wallet. He's <laughs> I wish I did. <laughs> I wish you did too. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Mark forty. Yes, hi. Uh, I'm uh, listening to you from 93 Rock out in Sacramento. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm dating a, uh, a girl that works at the uh, Embers uh, erotic uh, uh, place that uh, they have strippers and stuff like that there. Uh-huh. And uh, her uh, stage name is Utah, and the place she uh, dances at Embers. Uh-huh. And, uh... <laughs> well, what's that on the corner of, uh, Mark? <laughs> uh, no, thank you. Okay. And... Uh, anyway, she's, uh, she, uh, she became a big fan because she couldn't listen to the show, and so I recorded stuff. So she's hearing this, and, uh, she'll be hearing this. And, uh, we only got, oh, uh, I've been seeing her since, uh, 93 for five years. And I've heard your situation with the girl. Was she from England? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, Catlin, my stripper girlfriend. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I've heard a lot of the, uh, you know, w what Drew says, the bad advice that most strippers hate men. Uh, it's a love-hate thing. Uh, and, it, you know, I just wanted to, uh, I can't see this, although that uh, I uh, expressed my feelings a long time. It took her five years to, to say anything, uh, you know, strongly, and that, that worried me quite a bit. Uh, Mark, is, yeah. it, is it a totally nude place, or is it just topless? It's, uh, no, it's not totally nude. Okay. Yeah, it's just top. <laughs> Lap dancing, just, uh, is there touching and stuff like that? A little bit, yeah. Uh-huh. And um, how old is she, Mark? She's three years younger than I am. Okay. So uh, she's uh, she's getting ready to hang up the uh, G-string. Uh, I mean, uh, most strippers don't make it uh, that far into their 30s. Yeah, she's, like I said, she's a big fan. In fact, uh, <clears throat> she has uh, big breasts like you, that, uh, that you mentioned that you like. Right. In fact, <laughs> Mark. 
Yeah, well, she well, just recently Mark. sent uh, you her photo, and she said, "Oh, she, she did." Yeah. All right, uh, Mark, Let's dig it out, man. Mark, uh, the deal is, um, people that choose this sort of uh, vocation very often come from abusive past, particularly at the hands of men. And having to do this in front of men doesn't make them feel that much better about men. In fact, it makes them loathe men typically, and uh, they tend to get in abusive relationships. And that are rather chaotic, and uh, that's just the pattern that's associated with having been sexually abused and choosing this sort of vocation. It's like uh, what you said about TV stars, female TV stars that right. come from these. But it's uh, you know that type of performing. I mean, it's, I don't see. I can't certainly say that I could judge uh, someone who was a stripper, male, female, after I've done years and years of stand-up comedy. I, I don't know what's worse. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, it's a very... Uh, I, 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 I would suspect the ultimate would be uh, uh, doing a three-minute set while you're nude. Right. Uh, that takes confidence. <laughs> Live nude comics. This is, uh, this is a brilliant idea, except for I, have, I, I, you know, I don't want to see uh, any comedians naked that, that I can think of, uh, except for maybe Margaret Cho, but that's just uh, for a novelty. Yeah, I, <laughs> uh, hey, Mark. Yeah, I just wanted her to hear uh, Drew's... Uh, uh, opinion uh, of uh, the people. I, that I, I'm not. I'm not disparaging anybody. I'm just saying that it's not necessarily healthy acting out of things that happen to people. It, it tends to. It tends to perpetuate the stuckness. Here, the here's, the stuck. uh, here's the deal on this show. We play the odds. Uh, not every female stand-up comedian is a nutcase. Uh, most of them are, but not everyone. Mm -hmm. Not every uh, stripper uh, hates her dad and uh, loathes men, but most of them are. Even uh, not every attorney is an a-hole. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. They all are. That's right. <laughs> all right. That's the one thing. I that's forgot. true. That's very true. And we can all agree on that. All right. Uh, we got to go to break. More Love Line with Tom Arnold after this. Sensitive air. Uh, <laughs> was he, was he, were you giving CPR right after that? That uh, was uh, Don Ho, yeah. Uh, Drew came in here with the crash cart and the paddles and the uh, lactate ringers and D5W and uh, stat and uh, brought Don back to life. Uh, there's a man who's probably uh, smoked half of Molokai. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we're talking about pot with Don Ho and uh, he. Uh, he didn't really. Uh, he he didn't really sidestep the no, issue. No, he knew a lot about it. Yeah. They yeah, do in Hawaii. They like that. That's what they do. He uh, and and uh, and look at them. Uh, this is a this is a role model society. Uh, a lot of guys uh, wearing towels, hanging out on the beach, uh, paddling and uh, body surfing and uh, eating the whole pig, uh, not just the uh, bacony part, but right. the uh, head, eyeballs, everything. You ever been to one of those luau's? No, Tom. I mean, wait, uh -huh. I know Tom. I just saw you on. Um, uh, Hard copy? Uh, no, no, no. Kerna could be any of them. One of those things. No, it wasn't yeah. bad. It wasn't oh, bad. Oh, okay then. <laughs> you, <laughs> you were uh, you were uh, judging uh, or uh, hosting or judging or both uh, the uh, Miss uh, Tropicana. Uh, oh yes, I did that last fall. I, Hawaiian Tropic. I got the opportunity to go to Hawaii and uh, you know to play golf. And uh, although <sighs> I don't play, but to judge one of these contests, it was it was an incredible experience. And I think you should try it sometime. All right, so let me just uh, tell me if I'm wrong about any answer. Okay, go ahead. Are you are you nominating Adam for that job? I think he'd be great. He needs a successor uh, to the throne. He may, oh, he, yes. may, he may be able to. to I can uh, speak. Call Ron Rice. He'll he'll hook you right up. Is uh is uh he the guy who uh, runs Hawaiian yes, Tropic? Yes, he's the creator. He right. created it in his garage. Right. Really? <laughs> right. Uh, now he's having sex with the women in the garage. It, all right. Uh, all right. Uh, no, he how, does. I don't think he has sex with those guys. He has like a one, you know, his gal that's really good looking, you know. Oh, I mean, I can only imagine. And this guy uh, looks like uh, the guy from uh, Far Out Space Nuts, uh, Chuck McCann. Uh, do you remember Chuck McCann? <laughs> no, but he, I think he might be Barney Rubble. A Chuck, bit, great big color one. Chuck McCann is the guy who used to do that old commercial uh, for the deodorant where the guy would open the medicine cabinet and he'd say, right. hi, guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, here's what Tom has to do. Uh, they pay you a bunch of money, I'm sure. No. Uh, it's all free. Oh, there's some sort of an honorarium. Deal, right. But, well, you, know. you, sell, you, you sell the jag they give you. Whatever yeah. it is, you get some money. Uh, they fly out to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, you hang out with uh, 50 of the most beautiful women in the world. Uh, you shoot a round of uh, golf with James Brolin. Right. And then it's uh, back to the States with a nice tan, a couple of new cigars, and a big fat wallet. Well, I mean, it's sort of yeah, like that. You know, it, yeah. uh, you know, some of the guys, they have regular judges that are, like, come to all of them, and they know all the gals. 
and they, you know, they have, uh, you know, they're the inside guys, whatever. And I was, uh, no. who, who are these regular judges? I would like to get on this circuit. Is it guys like Denny Terrio and Adrian Zman? No, it... no, no. It's guys like, uh, well, I know Jerry Buss goes to a lot of them, and that's how I, he recruits Laker girls and so forth. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, lot. there's a bunch of guys. There's a bunch of guys that go and do it. There's also, you know, it was great. They had a woman at... And a lot of the guys were bummed out about this, but there's a very nice lady who has AIDS who uh, got it, had sex with Tim Richmond, the race car driver, one time. You know, he was the guy that got AIDS. Do you know this story? Everybody. No. Uh, he, yeah. Go, you go want ahead. to tell it? You could, well, he had, this race car driver had AIDS, and he went and had sex with a lot of people, even after he knew it, and, uh, and killed some of them. And this, this wow. lady is a friend of mine, and she got it, got it and she, a uh, very nice gal, and she gave a speech to all the girls about AIDS and condoms and, and everything the night before this thing started, so all the guys are all bummed out, you know, because <laughs> they'd heard the, you know, the sad story. Right. And, uh, and so, uh, but they have a they have variety type of people there. It was good. Uh, yeah, it, it, it looked like nothing but good. Uh, uh, hotel, I mean, uh, uh, I, I, it I, rained I, the whole time. It I, was, where was it? It was in, uh, somewhere on uh, Big Island. But I was thinking to myself when I was driving in uh, with this uh, thought uh, in my head about seeing this, uh, seeing Tom on this show, that I have to, I think I'm at the point in my career, and this is uh, quite frankly why I got into radio, uh, that I should embark on some of these projects. Uh, it doesn't have to be Hawaiian Tropic. It could be uh, Miss, uh, Miss, Miss Paba, uh, whatever it is. I want to get involved with some of these. Try uh, it once. Contacts. Try it once. I mean, first of all, you sit there and you're supposed to, judge these women on their appearance and i thought they all you know they all you know i've my old man they all look great then yeah. and so and and how do you it's so hard i can't imagine the, the poise or whatever it would take to walk down with a little bikini and have uh, people man people look at you and judge you on your body I, I mean, what does that, that's something I don't know anything about. I could not do right. it. You know, it's, I got a lot of respect for them. I'm, I'm guessing most of them would prefer that rather than uh, you uh, have them uh, recite some literature or something Well, they like do that. speak. Oh, they, they do? Speak. Yeah, they, uh, uh, they answer well, a couple uh, questions. I see they get minus points for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one talked. Yeah, well, uh, see, God doesn't work that way. He doesn't give every somebody everything. No, we would have to uh, kill them. Dana, 16. Hello? Hey. Hey. Adam? Yeah. I love you, Adam. <laughs> love you. Uh, is Dr. Drew there? I'm here. <laughs> What's um, up? Dr. Drew? Yeah. Um, I think I may have HIV. Why? Um, my boyfriend, who is about, <clears throat> I don't know, about 20, um, his ex-girlfriend told him that she had HIV. And How did you find that out? Um, about three months ago, when I was going out with him. He was telling me how she was calling, and they were trying to be friends. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he, you know, he goes up to me, and he tells me, you know, I have to talk to you. And he says, well, you know, Lori, she says she may have HIV. She may have HIV. Yes. She said she did, definitely. Now she knows she does. Definitely, you know, supposedly. What about him? About him, he didn't care. I mean, we were going out, and he told me if he had HIV, he'd kill himself. Uh, but has he been tested? Has he figured it out? No, he hasn't, and I haven't talked to him in about maybe a month. So because of this, you you ended the relationship? Um, not because of this. It was it was mm -hmm. different. I kept leaving the toilet seat down. Why did right. you, why did the end, relationship end? Oh, um, the relationship ended when he called me a fat bitch. <laughs> so you, you, this guy, sounds pretty creepy, right? Well. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about himself. He's going to kill himself. I mean, what happened? so the reliability of the story already is kind of suspect. Okay, this is what happened. Um, I, I never had sex before. And we started going out, and I did have sex with him. More, than, more than once? Yes. Did he wear a condom? No. Okay. Did, did you have sex after you heard about his ex-girlfriend? Um, yes, and I regret it. You you had unprotected sex with him after you heard that his ex girlfriend was HIV positive. He told me it wasn't true because he called her. Okay. And, I mean, she called him, and you know, she was telling him, "Yeah, I have HIV," and she's a liar. How is it that she? How is it that she's supposed to contract it? Um, from she cheated on him with, with some other guy. Uh huh. All right, well, su supposedly she got HIV from him, so she called him. All right. Have you been tested? No, I haven't. I don't know what to do. How long ago was your last contact with this guy? Um, about a month ago, in May. 
Have you had any kind of uh, vi any kind of flu-like syndromes? Any high fever, sore throats, anything like um, that? Um, no, I haven't. Okay. Sometimes, if people are getting the infection, when the acute viral infection occurs, there can be a sort of a mononucleosis-like syndrome, and that's when the antibody typically becomes detectable. Mm -hmm. Not everybody necessarily gets that syndrome, but not having had that certainly is reassuring. Uh, but. Let me, let me say this. Uh, y y you got to get tested, and we don't want to minimize uh, your plight, but uh, it, it, it doesn't sound, sound... Yeah, it sounds suspect. Uh, it, we've heard more yeah. dangerous scenarios. Right. Uh, right. I, I know it's you we're talking about, and uh, you know, even if there's a uh, you know, half a percent chance, uh, you want to be concerned, and you want to go get checked. I definitely do. Get tested now. Get tested again in six months. I do suggest you either go to a doctor or a test site where you can get the pre-testing counseling because it sounds like you've got a lot of stuff on your plate. And I wouldn't recommend you go to the pharmacy and just get the cheek membrane test. You know, there's stuff you can do. You can do blood and cheek uh, saliva tests now yourself. Right. Uh, and send that in because I, I think you need some counseling here. And then most test sites who are doing it responsibly will have a good deal of information to give you and hopefully settle you down a little bit about it. It's, uh, it's ironic that that was not the reason they broke up. Yeah, we could have bet. We could have done a lot of things with this young lady. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, there will be gambling uh, before the night is through. Uh, Tom, I uh, hope you have something in your billfold. Uh, oh, great, great. You know, I, the thing is, that gal should go sign up tomorrow to get tested oh, just so she can sleep. Absolutely. Or, you know, it, get it over it'll, it'll be negative. And then again, it'll have to be done again in about five months, though. Uh, Megan. Hello? Hey, you're 16. Yeah. Um, I live across the road from my stepfather and with my grandparents. And a while ago, I guess it was, that he broke into the house and left in my room, like, a Hustler magazine, $20 bill, some flowers, and a note. What did the note say? Um, I didn't read it. I brought it straight to my grandparents. Good. Good instinct. Mm, wow. Mm. <laughs> you, uh, uh, you, you get the Caller of the Night Award, Megan. <laughs> I gave him the money, too. And... Oh, all right. Well, now you're losing. <laughs> uh... It, what kind of history have you had with this guy? I like for the longest time I thought he was—he seemed so nice. He was like very nice to me. We talked a lot. I mean, there how, how old is he? What? How old is he? I don't know. He's like forty. Does 30. he do drugs or alcohol? He drank. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sounds but, like kind of a mm -hmm. like a while ago, like before this, like when I was like ten or not ten, but like twelve or thirteen. He used to give me lingerie and uh. like. I don't. I didn't. It didn't bother me that much because he didn't say anything about it. He just gave it to me, and then he wouldn't say anything about it after that. Well, where's your real dad? Don't know. Where's your mom? She's gone. She went away. Where's your mom? She lives in another state right now. Why'd she go away? Um, uh, to live with a friend. I've, I've like always lived with my grandparents because of like problems okay. with alcohol. Okay, so yeah. so your mom mom's an addict alcoholic too, right? Yeah. Okay, and then this guy, uh, on all likelihood, is as well. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, your grandparents are um, sober. sober enough to, uh, you know, maybe alert the proper authorities here, or well, at least. That's the problem. They, what? They accused me of being with him. Oh my God! Uh, uh, oh. Oh, oh. All right, uh, you're coming out here to live with Tom. That's right. I got plenty of room. <laughs> Uh, there will be some atrocities at Tom's house, but uh, they will pale in comparison <laughs> They're to eating, this. They're mostly bad eating. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the sort that Elvis's guests uh, got. <laughs> yes. a, lot of, a lot of fried food That's true. and uh, bad cable TV on a, uh, a theater-sized screen. Uh, Megan, you're 16. Mm -hmm. uh, here's your job. Uh, your job is to uh, try to remain sane until you can get out of that environment. Yeah. I know, because a everybody around you is uh, effed up and uh unfortunately uh you know it, you drag the kids down uh, i don't have to we, we talk about this every night but your job is to uh, see if you can escape that environment with some shred of sanity so that you can uh, go out on your own and not recreate uh, this horrible situation by getting pregnant by getting into substance abuse and alcohol and whatnot or uh, how you doing with guys um, I have a lot of boyfriends. Oh, you do? I right. mean, just one now, but, you know. All right, all right. Do you have protected sex? Uh, I don't have sex. Oh, okay. you don't? There we go. Well, no. oh, that's she, good. She still is the caller of the night. All right. And it sounds like she's living with the least effed up yeah. part of her family. Right. Yeah. Which is which mm -hmm. is good. I mean, as compared to the right. most. Yeah. All right, uh, Megan. Mm-hmm. 
I'll tell you what, we're going to put you on hold. We're running late for break, and we'll uh, wrap it up with you when we come back, all right? Okay. All right, stay put. Meanwhile, as the faceless evil closes in on the... Adam Carolla, who knows where Dr. Drew is, uh, but Tom... He's programming Arden his wife's computer. Is here. Uh, we're running late, and we will be back in 10 seconds. All right, it is Loveline. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. We're here with uh, Dr. Drew, myself, Adam Carolla, and Tom Arnold, and Dr. Drew's pager. I also uh, <laughs> would like to thank uh, the great uh, Diamond Limousine for uh, getting uh, Tom here. That was no limousine, piece. my friend. That was a sedan. Oh, it was a... Uh, but it was a good driver. I liked him. It was a town car. Yes, it was a town car and a nice driver, I, I believe, from Israel. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, a foreign driver? Yeah, there's, sure. they're they're good. They're good. No idea that even existed in this country. Oh, it does. And uh, uh, but uh, they call themselves a limo uh, service. Uh, I think uh, whenever you cart somebody around, it is a limo, uh, or at least you run a limo service. Uh, but I want to talk about your sperm for just uh, okay. one moment sure. here. Uh, we'll transition into that. Uh, we were talking a couple of breaks ago. Uh, Drew was showing uh, pictures of the lovely triplets mm -hmm. and um, you were talking about uh, starting a family with right. your uh, new wife. Yes, I have I've never had children of my own. Now, Drew did the uh, in vitro thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, is uh, was something wrong with you, Drew? No. No. It was uh, Susan. Mm -hmm. And uh, But Tom, you uh, yes. mentioned that you had a low There's sperm count. There's something wrong with me, yes. Now, what is up with that? Well, I don't, you know, it could be for many reasons, but I've had a low sperm count since I started counting them. Uh, when I was in college, I went to my roommates and I went down to donate sperm to get $35. You know, we were going to do that to help pay our, you know, party and money. And uh, we, I was rejected. I donated some sperm out in North Hollywood, but it cost me thirty-five dollars. So exactly, I, I well, that's, a deal, no, that's a good deal, though. That's a good deal. Oh, okay. And uh, but you know, I, so uh, my first wife and I, we tried to have uh, kids and actually uh, went as far as having the egg uh, fertilized and and put in. Uh, actually, we tried with my uh, former sister-in-law, who was younger, and was going to carry the kids. It didn't work. But Th this is. Uh, so, are you on your? Is this your third marriage? No, this now? is my second marriage. Oh, and, first uh, wife, Roseanne. Yes. Okay. And uh, um, with uh, Julie's, uh, my wife uh, just turned 24, and uh, and uh, you know, I, we said we'd wait a couple of years. We've been together three years, but married for two, and uh, so now, you know, I'm 38. I'm, I want kids because I'd like to be a grandfather even one day. Right. And so, uh, you know, hopefully uh, at the end of the summer. Now we have to do something even better than in vitro. We have to do something called the gift program, which they basically have a needle that will take one sperm. It doesn't even have to be moving. And uh, implant that put directly into the egg, and and uh, and then get her going, and then put her back inside my wife. How do they uh, harvest that egg, Drew? Do they do that? Yes, they do. They it, used to do it by uh, laparoc. They, no, they take it from the uterus now. Well, yeah, but they, what they have they have to hyperstimulate the ovaries. Well, yes, pretty, that's true. That's the bad part. The yeah, shots. Some amazing and that's where hormones. I come in. Yeah, exactly. And, and then, they, then they take a long needle, which is sort of curved at an, yeah. about a sixty degree angle, and oh. they go through the wall of the vagina and, right. and suck the eggs out of the ovaries. But they they, they numb you up or something. I mean, uh, you, you're going to scare my wife. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, but they they, my, they, they numb like you. Up. It's better than it used to be. I mean, it's not easy. Yes, and it is my fault. Right. But, uh, as long as you blame yourself. And right. they, they take uh, then the egg out. How big is the egg at that point, they take Drew? The follicles. They 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 create these sort of super eggs, super follicles, and uh, the egg itself is still a single cell. But the follicles pretty. But they have. But they take several. They take as many as they can get. They try yeah. to get at least six. And they put them in like a petri dish, and then they take uh, Tom's lethargic sperm, right. And they actually induce in it. They 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 uh, mm -hmm. entice it. They goose it. Yeah. Uh, go on. Uh, like when you're trying to train a dog, and you just put a doggy door in uh, the kitchen door, and you want to get him to use it. Is it that kind of thing where you, you put like the through. bowl on yeah. the other side and? Well, it's, no, it'd be like if you took the dog by the butt and rammed him through the door. <laughs> that, I mean, that's what it's like. You uh, you know, you put the thing into the you, you got right. to see the needle go in there if you have a microscope or something. And uh, then uh, once the sperm is safely inside the cocoon of the egg, uh, then the egg is uh, re-ingested into the woman by uh, what they uh, just put it in a thing of Gatorade and she downs it or how they get it back in. They they a little pipette and they inject it. It depending on what kind of procedure they're doing. Sometimes they put it in the fallopian tube. Sometimes they put it right into the uterus. And, and now you're pregnant or do you have uh, to sort of you wait? You have to wait and see. And they try to they try at least we were involved with this. They try to put five fertilized eggs, five embryos in because that increases the likelihood. Who is your wall, doctor by the way? Of one taking. Or do you uh, passing a fertility group? Okay. Okay. Seraphini. Very good. There's so much good fertility. Yeah, Doctor Mars is a tremendous. Yeah, tremendous. Yeah, tremendous. Yeah, and that's where that's where these guys started. Was with Mars. Before. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got so. it. All right. So there's a real good shot of this working out. I hope so. 
And how much does this stuff cost, by the way? It's not covered by a health plan, is it? Uh, yeah, it's sometimes. Is it? Sometimes. Yeah. it is? Sometimes. What kind of crap is that? This is why my premiums is a single guy. Yeah. You know, no, I go no, in there no, with no, a no, sprained no. ankle once no, a year, no, 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 and no, I'm no, paying no. for you guys no, uh, no. Uh, who are breaking new ground. No, you've got the K-Rock plan. Oh, I do? You're, 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 <laughs> yeah. You're, you're not paying for it. <laughs> Let me tell you why. I went through a problem with our health plan. Everyone in radio is a drug addict. So, right, that's uh, true. After everyone went through rehab for their eighth time, uh, they just got rid of whatever good health care they had. And right. now uh, we're all on the Dr. Bombay uh, <laughs> health plan. We actually have to summon uh, the doctor. Sometimes yeah. he appears, sometimes he doesn't. He's usually drunk. Uh, well, you know, it's an emotional thing, too. I mean... You know, I have been through it a little bit where you're hoping and hoping, and then your wife has to take these shots, and, uh, you know, and, and, and anytime you put more extra hormones into somebody, you know, you, who knows what's going to happen, and, and it's very, it's hard for her. And then you, you know, in my case, it's a matter of convincing your wife is a good idea, you right. know, and uh, even though it's something we discussed before we got married, but, you know, a, a younger person, they want to, you know, they want to live a little bit. You know, they think that that's going to stop their, you know, the, if they want to have a career or whatever. Yeah. And it's just, uh, you know, I my job is to convince her that's absolutely not true. A any way you slice this, she's going to resent the hell out of you. Yeah, but that's then I'll have my kid. Right. All right. Then she'll turn on me and take the kid. You know how ugly it gets. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, 20. Hi. <laughs> hey. We're question. just charting Tom's uh, career. Oh, I know. At least I, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's finish with that. Oh, uh, that's right. Hold on a second. Uh, who was that, Drew? Uh, that was Megan, yes. Uh, so, Megan. Yeah. Uh, you're 16. Uh, your drunken stepfather who lives across the street. and it, uh, there, anymore. there anymore. He's moved out, but I have, like, nightmares still. Sure. All right, but he came by uh, your grandparents' house, who you're living with, dropped off a hustler, uh, $20, and, uh, flowers. and some flowers. It must be very difficult for you to feel secure anywhere with the kind of family system you live among. How did he get in there? We don't know. I mean, uh, the curtains were messed up, so I guess he got in through the window. Well, but and we the grandparents blame him. Megan for inviting mm -hmm. him in. I mean, it's just... And, and this is the same guy who bought her I mean, lingerie can, when he was uh, when she you, was 13. You, she's been violated in some way. Really, it's it, it's like any other kind of breaking entry, even if it's not in this kind of overt uh, way. People feel violated after somebody's come into their house. And here are the people with whom she is relying upon to feel secure are blaming her for the entry. Right. Very, very, very tough. Whose parents are these grandparents? Uh, your My mother's? Mom's. Your mom's? Yeah. All right. They, well, the uh, raised her properly. acorn don't fall too far from the tree. Yeah. And, like... I mean, this isn't the first time stuff has, like, happened. Or they blame me. They, like... My medicine was stolen one time. What kind of medication you on? Um, Ritalin. Because mm. I was... I have ADHD. Mm -hmm. and I have that, too. Mm. I took that and for many years. The my retinol was being stolen, and they kept. Like, well, let me let me uh, uh, just uh, just give you a warning, just a, a sidetrack for a second. I, I have a nothing. I'm sorry for people that actually have this disorder, isn't it? but the people that have ADHD over the age of 20 have have. Uh, I prefer to call it alcoholism, because that's really what it is. So be careful, man. You may be predisposed to addiction. Okay, um, but. It got stolen. It was only stolen when, like, they left and I'd be home alone. Right. And he, I guess he was the one who did it. Well, we d we've up. already speculated he's an alcoholic. He's already so. on our a-hole, uh, drunken a-hole list, which and is so on the back of the a-hole list. He may be abusing her riddle. Tom, you're on the back. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thanks. You saw that. All right, so, uh, <laughs> Megan. Mm -hmm. uh I would alert the authorities. I mean, if your grandparents aren't going to do anything, uh, you should do something. I mean, you have to document uh, this kind of stuff because if it then uh, happens again, you have a case now, and guys like this uh, need to be locked up. And we talk about this all the time, but it just makes me sick when uh, these women uh, pick one bad guy to have the kid with, and then he goes south, and then they bring a predator mm -hmm. into the environment. I mean, here you are, a uh, single mom... Uh, living with a couple of uh, eight-year-old girls, and you're bringing in this guy who's a drunken pedophile to uh, keep an eye on the kids uh, while I work the graveyard shift over at the A&P. This is the worst idea I've ever heard in my life. We get these calls all the time. It's the stepdad who's uh, up to uh, no good, and uh, I blame the stepdads, but moms, you got to do a little better job out there. Don't bring criminals into the house. All right. But it's not all stepdads, obviously. There's a lot of good ones out there. Yeah, there's a, no, there's a lot of biological dads who molest, too. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got your point. Uh, and moms, too. Moms do that, too, you know. Yeah. You know, not as much. Uh, they, they, like, have their own form of a passive abuse, but it's not that uh, overt physical stuff. Jennifer. Not usually, so, but it has happened. Yeah, it does happen. happen. There's yeah. supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is your mom? Is no, your mom no, but she wasn't around. But, uh, but I know it does from people I know. Okay. Jennifer, 20. 
Okay, I got a question. I just started diet pills about two weeks ago. Mm hmm. And um, my boobs, like, hurt real bad. And they went from, like, probably like a 36B, and I'm now a 36D. Really? Yeah. Two weeks? Uh huh. This, um, they should put something else on the label. <laughs> what medication? Redux. And uh, have they been working? Have you been losing weight? Yeah, I've lost about 13 pounds. Are you lactating at all? No. I Don't be surprised if that happens. I bet that's what's going on here. What's going on? I, I, drug, this sounds like a wonder drug to me. No, it could be. Your can ass raise, gets smaller and your chest gets bigger? It, it can raise <laughs> uh, your prolactin levels and may actually cause breast, product, breast milk production. Is that bad? They uh, like that. Mm, <laughs> yeah, it, I bet that's what's starting to happen. You really got to talk to the doctor soon that's prescribing this for you. Redux is interesting medicine. Uh, it is probably pretty good for weight reduction, but there's lots of concerns about it. And oh. certainly the most of the serious side effects people see after the use of three months or longer. Do you uh, exercise too? Yes. That's good. How overweight were you? Um, I weighed 176. Mm, I hope you're, are you over 5'2 five, five, or so? You're not really in the range that should be using diet pills, especially. Well, it age. depends where you live. If you're in L.A. <laughs> yeah, in Iowa, you'd be, they'd be wanting you to eat more. Yeah, hey. You know, how can you gain weight? <laughs> yeah. Took out a super shake. Hey, uh, hey Bean Paul, over <laughs> yeah. here now. Seriously, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's different. Uh, where do you live, Jennifer? California. All right, that's bad. Uh, <laughs> and, and have, did you try dieting and exercise and all that? Yeah. And how big's your mom? Um, she's five. Three. Now, how big is she? Um, I think she's 126. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, kick your dad in the nuts for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be him. Yeah. Uh, the, and the dieting and all that didn't work. I, I just, uh, the idea of taking a pill uh, to do anything. At, at young age. Especially at 20, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's, I think it's just like the worst of uh, possible messages or message you could you could send to your brain. Mm -hmm. Well, my mom put me on it because she's like totally concerned. She thinks I'm just totally overweight. Uh, you're 20, yeah. Jennifer. You're 20. Yeah. Uh, you tell your mom the reason you're overweight is because uh, she's been a little too concerned for a little too long, and it's manifesting itself in compulsive eating. Am I right, Tom? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Did you have an eating disorder when you were younger? No. no. Is your mom overbearing? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Are you still living at home? Yes. Why? Um, don't have enough money to move out yet. Are you going to junior college? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can smell a junior college. <laughs> I can, I can. Yeah. You're never going to a four-year university. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> you might get the uh, AA, but that, uh, that, that, will, uh, that will be as far as you get. Get a job, uh, make some money, and get the hell out of that house because uh, your mother's domineering uh, mothering is what is uh, the biggest problem in your eating disorder. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah, your mom rides you, you get depressed, and then you eat. No, I don't eat that much. Well, uh, we got to do some math here. What's going on? Maybe you eat badly. What you do eat, you eat is not good. No, I eat, I eat good. It's just we don't know why I didn't. I just, I want to lose the weight. I just put it on. and I eat healthy. I mean, we all eat good. And then, like, I don't go out that much. And when I do, I just eat, like, a salad or grilled chicken or something. So you just have a slow metabolism. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, listen, uh, that is the way it works. I mean, there's some people that, uh, obviously, you know them. Uh, they make you sick. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, eat whatever they want. They never put on a pound. And then there's some people that just uh, inhale, and uh, their hips uh, get wider. Most people, in order to lose weight, you have to be very hungry all the time. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. To yeah. really lose weight. If you're really going to lose, I mean, it would just keep your weight off. You can learn to eat right one time. But if you're going to lose weight, uh, you, you, you know, it's not an easy thing. All right, Jennifer? Yep. All right, and, and if you think about it, uh, I'm sure uh, the uh, the maker had uh, no idea what society would turn into. I mean, uh, in in back in the day, uh, you had to walk eight miles uh, just to uh, you know get hold of a turkey leg or something. Mm -hmm. You had to hunt. I mean, you actually had to chase your food. <laughs> so you, or either that, or you're eating some weed that grew on the ground. Uh, now the idea that you can uh, take the uh, Ford Explorer and drive it through the McDonald's. Uh, I mean, the fact is you never have to get out of your car. You get in the car, you drive through, you, you grab yourself. They'll bring it to your face, too, man. You just call them up. You don't even have to get in the car.
Right. You, that's a great thing. Food will just uh, come to you now. <laughs> <laughs> you never have to leave the TV set. I mean, I, I'm sure whoever designed uh, the human had, had could, couldn't have imagined this. There's no way he figured out buffalo wings. Uh, <laughs> no way God had any way of knowing about, like, buffalo wings and uh, Thousand Island dressing. Is there anything in Scripture about Thousand Island, Drew? No. Okay. <laughs> that's a rhetorical question. Yeah. Bryce. Yeah. Hey, you're 15. You're on with Tom Arnold. How's it going? Good. Good. Uh, you guys rule, man. I just have to say that. Thank you. All right. Cool. Um, well, let's see. About two weeks ago, um, I had oral sex with um, this girl from, and she lives like four miles away from New York. And now my girlfriend, you know, she's coming back tomorrow. She was in Texas. And... She's coming back, and uh, I don't know if I should tell her or what. I don't know what to do. So. Where's the girl from New York? Is she going back to New York? No, she's, she lives in New York. She lives on Long Island. So. Uh, you don't see her regularly? No, well, um, like, I'm supposed to see her this weekend or something. So you plan to have a relationship with her? Uh, uh, she wants, well, I, she Bryce, what do you want? Me. What do you want, Bryce? Bryce, where do you live? I live in Maryland. Do you want, do you want to have a new relationship, or do you want your old one? I kind of want my old one. Are you sure? Yeah. Why? Because the girl I'm with is she's really hot and all. Oh yeah. And you know she's like she's really awesome, but she just at the time when before she left, like two days before she left, she like she was really not really interested. And then before she left, she told me she loved me and she'll miss me and all that. Hmm. So. Hmm. Well, right. did you did you uh, the oral sex? Did you perform that or did? No, you? she this the girl. You know, she oh, that's not cheating. Yeah, right? this, I think I don't even think women think that's cheating. No, <laughs> like, well, I've heard they don't consider it sex. I know that. Okay, well. All right, um, Bryce. Wait a minute. I'm just trying to do the math here. Uh, the girl lives four miles down the road. Mm -hmm. Uh, but she no lives... no no four hours. Oh, four hours. Yeah, she lives in New York. All right. Uh, so you, what were you doing out there? Well, it's not out. In, see, um, mm. uh, it was like a camp thing. Oh, and okay. Uh, like, camping again. Everybody got camping laid. Again. Everyone gets laid in camp, but me. <laughs> I, I swear to God, uh, there's more sex uh, going on in the wilderness. Uh, uh, there, I hope uh, the counselors and uh, parents uh, understand about this. Drew, understand that uh, you will send your kids away to camp no, as children. They will come back <laughs> as, uh, as a, your young girl will come back a woman. No. Believe me, mm -hmm. if uh, the kids don't get her when the counselors will, mm -hmm. if that, uh, a rogue elk mm -hmm. will get her. Well, this, you know, this kid, it sounds like this. The one gal is four hours away at his age. You know, it's just not going to work. Right. And his other gal, if he thinks, you know, she said she loves him and he thinks there's hope, then I, then I, my opinion is you don't tell her. Right. They don't do it anymore. I mean, you can't just to give, get it off your conscience so you feel better. You can't hurt somebody else. I mean, that's my rule. Tom is, uh, that is the, uh, you're, you're at your best at night, Tom. I can, <laughs> I can tell you that right now because this is the way I think. It, here's, here's what I would do. And I give this uh, advice to everyone. Instead of uh, feeling guilty and telling your partner, mm -hmm. feel guilty and make that be uh, the motivating factor for not doing it again. Right, that's great. Don't burden uh, the person by laying it on them. Uh, Unless you want the relationship to end. Yeah, and, yeah. And then, and then end it. Right. And you don't even have to burden them with that. Just end it and yeah. just save that pa piece of pain for something else. Right. Right. All right, Drew, uh, you have another call uh, lined up there? We're just going to punch. I thought we were going to... Well, why don't we sell uh, the next one, please? All right. Uh, Rich. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> You're uh, 24. Yeah. Don't you think it's uh, time uh, people start calling you Richard? <laughs> well, no. Okay. No. What do they call you when you're, uh, like, uh, nine? Just, bruh? Richie. Richie. Is All your dad's right. name Richard? Uh, yeah. That's why. Ah, see, Tom. Well, <laughs> no, Tom. no wonder he's got a show named after. Him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you want, Rich? Well, um, when I was younger, my brother sexually abused me. He molested me and made me do things. And I was five, and he was like twelve or thirteen. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Rich, we're going to go to break, Okay. and uh, you will be the first call uh, when we come back. And I don't know how this works out, Drew, but how come I always goof on uh, the most horrible calls? 
I mean, this is proof that I have no idea what the calls are. Right. Whenever yeah. I make fun of someone's yeah. name, they, it's like uh, we laugh about it for a minute. Uh, I make fun of their name, uh, or they have some sort of speech impediment. I dig into them on that, right. and then it's like. Um, I'm a C4 quad. I, I just yeah. had a spontaneous abortion, and <laughs> hey, I'm a C4 quad, and uh, there's a meteor heading for my trailer right now. Yeah. And my, my dad's so drunk, he can't move it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll find out his brother's name when we come back. <laughs> John, the voice is... Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Tom Arnold is our guest tonight. You know, from uh, True Lies... Nine Months, McHale's Navy, and a bunch of other movies, uh, as well as a uh, TV show, which he has uh, coming out uh, this uh, September. First week, I believe, uh, that would be Sunday night at uh, 9 o'clock on the WB Network called The Tom Show. And uh, for what it's worth, uh, I like the Jackie Thomas show. I do, too. Uh, what is that, about four years yeah. old now? Mm-hmm. And, uh, 93. Uh, what, it, was it just on a season? Yeah, it was on for 18 episodes. And uh, you played, uh, I mean, it was, it was sort of a Larry Sanders before Larry Sanders, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I played a guy that was had his own TV show that was, uh, you know, it was a guy from Iowa, from a, worked at a B-packing plant, and he got his own show, and he, he didn't, uh, he wasn't the nicest person. And right. that, that was hard for the network, because they wanted me to have a kid or something, so I'd nice me up, but he wasn't that nice. You felt sorry for him a little bit, because he, you know, but he wasn't, some people just aren't great folks to have around and they couldn't understand that yeah uh tv people are usually uh, so lecherous and diabolical that uh, when you get a little too close to home they uh, yeah. they turn on you that's right uh imagine a, a show about a guy in tv who's a, an a-hole <laughs> <laughs> wow. they, they won't buy have none of that yeah uh it's uh you know uh who who was hitler's uh, spin doctor it's it's uh, the same principle uh, goering uh, who was it Drew? Uh, the point is, is uh, I mean, the he's show. He's so proud of himself for coming up with that. That was good. Yeah, good at him. Go ahead. Get paid the same. Um, I thought the show was real solid. Yeah. And uh, I was. Uh, I, I I think it may have surprised a lot of people mm -hmm. because um, the, uh, the the public's uh, perception of you is that you sort of rode in on Roseanne's uh, coattails right. and uh, she was basically uh, throwing you a bone or something. Right. But, uh, as it turns out, uh, the man's got some talent. Well, you know something too. I don't think the network put on, sh will put on shows for somebody's boyfriend or husband. They've, uh, you know, you see, uh, they may give you a pilot, but they're not going to put it on the air. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, and the new show is called uh, the Tom Show on the WB coming up in September. Rich, twenty-four. Well, Tom, I hope I wish you luck on your new show. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh yeah, Rich's situation was is his brother. I'm guessing older brother. Yeah. Uh, molested. He was, thir he was thirteen. You say. Yeah. yeah. And you were six? Yeah. No. Six or something like that. And God knows what happened to you. Who did what to your brother when he was six? Um, I don't know. <laughs> that's I mean, that's that's what causes kids to act out like that. They, they are sexually abused, and then they go out and abuse other kids. I mean, that's why there's such tremendous growth. Mm -hmm. This is such a tremendous... I mean, people question, is it still... Do you think it's happening more these days, or are people just talking about it more? It's happening more. Okay. It has an exponential growth built into it. It's well, unbelievable. What I'm afraid of is acting on you know that happening to me with children you know are you do you have that impulse no how how was it an isolated episode or did it happen quite a bit it it happened what i remember what it happened quite a bit it led up to things until he tried anal sex and he hurt me where uh where's your brother now well he lives in the same state but hate is uh, the word that i <laughs> I tolerate him, but I, I just... Have I you confronted like him. it? Did you ever talk to him about it? And, and, uh, no. Mm. Uh, did, the, did the family ever uh, find out about it? My, my mother, she was a nurse, mm. and she found out about it. Did she report it? Um, okay. She took me to the doctor and? because of, I had rectal bleeding. And she knew why? And she knew why? Huh? And she knew why? Yeah. And nobody ever intervened? No. Uh, I, I, your dad never found out. I don't know. I really don't know if my dad knows or not. No, here's the. Here's what what the... if you talk to your mother and say, uh, "What became of this?" I, I mean, uh, wouldn't you? Don't you feel that it's her responsibility to get him into some counseling and so forth? Yeah, especially since he has kids now. Oh, that was the question I wanted to ask. You got. You've got to report this. You have to report this. You have to report this. Who's he reported to? The social services, the, the child protective services. You must. 
He should also confront his brother. Uh, Maybe through a letter, through... I mean, you know, here's a kid that is saying, hey, I don't want... I'm worried about myself and, and this. And the, the thing he's doing is good is he's talking about it. Yeah. It's uh, people that do this and repeat this cycle. And it happened to me when I was a kid with an 18-year-old babysitter. I was between the ages of four and seven. And, you know, I eventually, as an adult, a few years ago, went back and confronted the guy in a safe way. Um, but the fact that you sit and talk about it that is, is what's going to prevent the cycle from continuing. How, uh, uh, just a couple of years ago you confronted him? Uh, uh, j me? Yeah. Yeah, about uh, four years ago. So uh, you would, <laughs> you were a celebrity at that time. Oh, yeah. Now, that must have freaked him out. Well, yeah, it was uh, a situation. And, and, I, and you know what I say is it was well planned out with my therapist. We worked on it. We, You know, because you don't want to go in and, and you know, you want to kick somebody's ass, but you don't want to get arrested and then have that have him do more damage to you and what happened was um, I found him and well I found out he was about to adopt another kid he's adopted a lot ah. of kids he works for a church in Iowa ah. oh beautiful uh, and or he's a big a person in the church he has a white collar job and I had there were some coincidences that happened with um, I would mentioned that I'd been abused on a show and I went to my sister's trial she was being sentenced uh, for something uh, drugs uh, she's still in prison long story but Anyway, so he, uh, this woman next to me says, I saw you on the show. Well, I don't mean to jump in, but with your past, you should really be funnier, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're a funny guy, but yeah. with all this, you should, yeah. be, you should yeah. be ass kicking. But, oh, yeah. Oh, God. But, uh, so this woman at the trial says, I heard you on Sally Jesse Raphael or whatever talking about somebody from, the, from your old neighborhood. And she says, it was this guy, Terry, whatever. And I said, how do you know? And she said, well, I'm married to his brother. Oh. And I, so it, it, it came together, and I, I had a private eye find the guy. I flew to Iowa, knew where he was, and I knew what I was going to say. And I, I, I got up there, and I went to his place of business. And the receptionist says, oh, my God, it's Tom Arnold. I said, is Terry, you know, here? He says, yeah, he's around the corner. So I saw him coming down the hall. I hadn't seen him since I was a kid. And he looked the same. You know, he looked older. And as what, he got is he 50 now? Or? Yeah, he mu well, I'm, yeah, I'm 38. He must be. Mm -hmm. And uh, he looked the same, and I saw him coming and walk up to me. I saw it in his eyes, you know. And as I got closer to him, it was so weird because... He smelled the same. I mean, he, and as I said, hey, I'm here, he went, he just kind of, I said, I'm here to give you back the pain and shame you caused me as a kid when you molested me. And if you tried to uh, try to do that to me now, I'd break your neck. And he started, he put it, you know, he was like, wait, your memories are wrong. And he started put put his uh, um, finger in my chest. And it was just, oh, for a second, you know, uh -huh. I just felt like that little kid. And so, you know, I grabbed his hand and said, you know, and then I just, I just told, said it basically again, louder. I mean, people heard, but that was it. You know, I just left him there and said, if you don't ever touch me again. And then I left there and I went to the governor and he was adopting a kid. And I said, you got to help me. Uh, this, he's going to adopt another kid. And it's a process he's been doing. And they said, we can't legally do anything. Uh. But uh, some, he, was, he, st he wasn't able to adopt a kid. Uh. So, and then I went to his neighborhood, had my farm hands go out middle of the night and plastered for four blocks around his neighborhood. His name, his picture, what he'd done up on the, every pole there was. They spent hours up there. And I felt real. And, I, you know, I, I talked to some members of the family. And, and, and you know, I, the word was out. So wow. that was it. So, and I felt that was it. And uh, w did you feel a, a finality after that? Yeah, I, I did. I mean, I felt I, had, I was never more nervous about anything in right. my life. You know, I just my heart was racing. And, you know, I... Uh, no, it just went so perfect because he's getting ready to leave his office. And, you know, and I just ran, you know, I, I w came out of there feeling like a whole different person. And, uh, you know, it, it, I really felt finality and put closure on the whole thing. And it's not something I carry with me. You know, I want to get rid of as many of those things as I can. It, it helps you not drink and, right. you know, the, et cetera. And so it was a good situation. Wow. And, uh, and brave. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, most people associate brave with like uh, bungee jumping or something. <laughs> uh, but this is uh, this is brave in so my book. Really confront your demons, uh, Rich. Uh, get your farm hands. <laughs> uh, do you have farm hands? Uh, uh, okay. R well, you heard it, Rich. But yeah. Um, but m my main concern is since then, um, my sexual appetite for is just through the roof. And yeah. I, I don't know. And that happens. It never slowed down. And that happens. When when people, that people become sexual compulsive mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. after this. Uh, if you, you, know, you can look into SA, you can look into therapy, things will help you contain some of these impulses. And most of these impulses surround issues of aggression. And, um, again, I, I, I just cannot say strong enough, you've got to report this because he is abusing those kids. 
And, uh, you know, your sexuality is, uh, is, is, is balanced so precariously mm. uh, that it's so easy to screw it up. It mm. really is. And if somebody gets in, and I wish people had the uh, capacity to g get through uh, being molested and then go on and have a great family and a normal sex life or what have you, mm. but it just doesn't work that way. Mm. It is so precarious that if a brother or a neighbor or a dad or a camp counselor or a priest or babysitter or whatever gets hold of uh, you, male or female, somewhere between uh, you know the time you're born and uh, maybe uh, 18 or so, uh, you're going to have trouble. It, and, uh, and it's sad, but it's true. And uh, then it's going to take work on your part to uh, rectify it. Hopefully, uh, you don't have to go to the uh, lengths mm -hmm. that Tom right. went to. But uh, you definitely cannot uh, leave it unchecked. And I also went to the police uh, in my hometown. You know, I went in there and talked to the chief of police and told him what happened. And he said, well, you know, it's been so many years, but, you know, we'll, we'll check into this. We'll see what we can do. And, and uh, you know, what, with this kid, uh, Rich, I think, uh, you know, you tell your mother, uh, they suggest to talk to her about, say, what happened? Did you tell Dad? Did you? But getting the word out is very important. Right. Uh, you have nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, Tri uh, Tristan. Yeah, hi. You're 24. You're on Loveline. I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, I was having sex with my girlfriend, and she was on top of me, facing my feet. Um, she sort of lay down on her stomach when we were doing that, and I kind of got stretched out a little bit. Uh, for about a week now, it's been just constant pain. I tried to call a local Ask a Nurse line here in Sacramento. Go to a urologist. Can, can you urinate? Yes, it's no problem, that, that a problem. It feels like it's sprained. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I yeah. called her and I asked if I should, I don't have any insurance, so I don't want to go into the doctor unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, can he run it off, Drew? No. Excuse me. No. Uh, It'll it, heal itself, though, won't it? Potentially, but it can scar and cause erectile dysfunction. There can be is things, it depending how severe this is. I mean, well, is it's it a tear. Possible, right? I mean, you can tear it's soft tissue and it can be torn. Oh God. Uh, you know, it may you didn't. Uh, did you feel the pain at the time? Yeah, but, you know, I didn't want to cry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I asked that question. was a loaded question because uh, I've said this many times. Guys, uh, and, and women for that matter, oh, yeah. sexually, I, I believe there is a, uh, there's a gland that produces Novocaine. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is in the, uh, in, the, in the neck somewhere, and it's only used during sex. And I swear to God, a guy could have a rusty sprinkler key in his liver, yeah. and he would... Uh, uh, it's not bleeding too bad. Yeah. Oh, it just wait. I'll be done yeah. in a minute here. If a guy is getting oral sex or getting it on or yeah. whatever, I don't care. And this is why this is how people hurt themselves. I've seen people with things on their knees where the actual cap right. uh, had come off their <laughs> knees. And well, we we're getting it on on the carpet the other day. Uh, yeah, but uh, it wasn't there a point when you were going to stop? I it, mean, uh, when when the cartilage was showing through, did, and, you weren't well. And women, done. women are the same. You could oh, be yes. in bed and her head is between the headboard and the wall and, and smash it. <laughs> It's great, great. And then afterwards, you, you, you touch her on the shoulder. She's like, ow, ow. <laughs> oh, geez. People have a high threshold for pain uh, when they have an erection. Drew, uh, is this not a medical fact? Endorphins. All right. So uh, he, he, what do you suggest? He has He's, no he insurance. Need, he really needs to see somebody. I mean, he, I, I don't know what extent of injury he has. I mean, he is ri risking permanent erectile dysfunction. All right, so, uh, so go to one of those free clinics. Hell, I, I've been to one of those. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not proud about it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a little humiliating because they're always run by uh, lesbians. And, uh, you, well, that's not done wrong with that, buddy. Yeah, but you're sitting there with the enemy uh, hanging oh, yeah, out of yeah, your pants yeah. uh, while uh, Nurse Ratchet and the other one are discussing the fate of your pants. Andrea Dworkin working on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back with more uh, Tom Arnold after this. And uh, and Tom Arnold. Yeah, we do. I love them. Yeah, they're great. We uh, we love them as well. We uh, brought them uh, out on stage at the uh, K Rock Weenie Roast uh, last week. I wish I could have been there. And uh, the oh, you know Ann now. You just asked. Oh yeah. Two uh, two You're weekends Ann. before I that, I was uh, is Ann Michelle's sister? Yeah, I know Michelle. Uh, Michelle is a friend of my wife's, and, uh, and you know it's one of these deals where you say you're going to do the show because I like the show, and then my wife calls me from school. Hey, you got to do the show because you, your publicist is calling it back. I said, Well, what are you what are you talking? How do you how are you involved? <laughs> well, you know, Anne's uh, Michelle, so you know, friend of Michelle's one of my buddies. <laughs> you know, Michelle and uh, my wife and some of their girlfriends went to Cabo. Now, see, when I go out to tell my buddies, it's like my wife just thinks the worst, you know, and she accuses me, you know, but your buddies are obnoxious, or you know, you guys are out. Well, they had a giant penis, a plastic penis, they slept with and took. Out 
out to the bars with them. It was a bachelorette party of some sort. But maybe instead of getting wasted and going out and... It sounds know, like some kind of pagan ritual. Yeah, it is. And, you know, if you saw a bunch of good-looking gals out at a bar with a giant inflatable penis, you'd probably think they were, you know, looking for love or something. <laughs> I'd say the penis pinata. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, here's uh, here's my take on women uh, when it comes to partying. Uh, guys, uh, a lot of guys will cut loose every weekend. Uh, women will save it up. I mean, a lot of guys will go to a strip club. Uh, you know, they'll go every other uh, every other week or a couple mm -hmm. times a month, and uh, they kind of get it out in doses. Uh, women, uh, it's been six and a half years uh, since they've seen a shaved ass and a tan body. Uh, they go out to Chippendales because some they put they put a couple of uh, Chardonnays in them, and all of a sudden they're up on stage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, uh, women, uh, they do it, uh, guys do it uh, incrementally, women do it all at once. That's true. And there's uh, uh, there's no uh, data that would convince me that women aren't just as wild as guys. Uh, society sort of keeps them in check, uh, but once society's not looking and they're across the border, uh, out comes the giant penis. Right. Uh, <laughs> Sheila. Yeah, hi. Hey, you're 24. Yeah. Um, I'm, calling, I'm calling for a few reasons. Um... First of all, um, I'm having this problem at home um, that I'm just about to move out finally after all these years, and um, it's really hard to it's really hard to do it. It's really hard to to finally like break this tie or whatever. And um, why are you moving out? Are you, are you getting married or something no, like that? No, 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 no. I'm just finally moving out. Just finally getting away from my parents. I've been wanting to move out. Uh, well, I moved out to go to college, and then I had to come back because I, I had some. Um, you got like a uh, depressive the... anxiety. Oh, disorder. okay. I, I have a I have a book for you. Really? This is a guy named James James Masterson wrote a book, The Search for the Real Self. Uh huh. It's a real characteristic syndrome when people get these depressive episodes around the time they leave for college. Oh, that's not only why. It, I've had, I've had a lot of. Um, no, I've had a lot of. Um, the main reason I wanted to call was because, like, I totally touched me earlier when you guys were talking about, um, talking about how a lot of problems are caused by their family and and how and how a lot of things are not really your fault, mm -hmm. and um, and that you know because I tend to take a lot of responsibility for for everything that that I that I. That I'm dealing with, and and maybe like a lot of it is what happened kind to you? Of baggage from my family. What happened? Oh, all kinds of things: abuse and and um, uh, neglect, and just all kinds of things. And it's like I told, it's like a totally new idea for me to think this way, the way you guys are talking. Uh, you know, so Tom, and you know, uh, you know, Tom's input and everyone, you know. Yeah, Tom's gonna be regular on the show. By yeah, the way. he should be. He's replacing Adam. It's all right. He's a great. Yeah, I didn't say that, Drew. I said a regular. I said that. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So Sheila. Yeah. You, you come from this uh, abusive environment, yeah. yet you're you're staying there, and you're you know yeah, you're well, three I months away from menopause. There. Well, I had. I, now I, you, yeah, but here's the deal: you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I was really sick though. Oh, okay. I really was. There was nowhere for me to go. I had no money when I I uh, when I got out of college. Um, I got into this bandwagon of of people that were really bad for me, and I got into pot smoking, and. Um, I had already. I didn't realize that I was already really vulnerable from the family I came from. I didn't do any personal searching. Uh, you've been doing some, though. I can tell that. Yeah, recently. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, yeah, so, but what so is your I question? Just got really into a situation where I had to be here because I was really sick. I was really like really depressed and um, you know, cr cr uh, what's it called? Chronic fatigue. No, 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 no. I was hospitalized, but that's not that's not important, you know. But the point the point is is that I had a really low period, and I actually had to be here because I didn't have anywhere else. Okay, to go. but now you're getting out. Yeah, now I'm finally getting better. I'm like on this medication, and I'm getting better, and I'm and I'm starting to, you know. All right, uh, don't. Uh, uh uh, get your security deposit back. Uh, you don't want to uh, hurt anything in the apartment. What? <laughs> I don't know. What are you about? I'm just ready. I'm just done with this call. Sheila, you're 24. Uh, Tom's mic isn't working. Yeah, there it goes. You're 24. You're getting out of the house. Yeah, I'm finally getting out, and Go. I just wanted to thank you guys. Well, thank you. It's God, probably scary God to leave, leave all that craziness. It's scary sometimes. You know, then what are you going to have? Uh, yeah, you have strangers screwing you instead of, your, instead right. of uh, familiar uh, people you know.
but people that, that uh, are used to that sort of chaos are pretty good about recreating it oh, yeah. in the real world. All right. Uh, that's, a, that's a nice parting gift for uh, Drew. Aaron, 23. Yes, sir. First off, I want to say all three of you guys never cease to entertain me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Did you mean Drew? Chuck? All, all okay. three of you guys. Drew, okay. Tom, <laughs> Drew and Adam. All three of you guys. Um, can I ask a real quick medical question? Yeah. For my main point? Mm -hmm. um, there's like some, oh, I've, two times now, uh, recently within the past couple months, I guess, I've had like a, a swelling in my lower abdomen, mm -hmm. just, just above my uh, penis. Mm -hmm. Is there like a, I don't know, is there like something down there that would, is this normal? Is or? it right in the midline or to one side? To one side, right, to the left side. Could be a hernia. Yeah. Could be a hernia. Could, oh, be a, really? could be a lymph node. Yeah, uh, well, like when I pressed on it, it felt like it, you know. Like, it, uh, like water it, Aaron, let me just make sure because I'm no doctor. But uh, Drew, most of the body is um, is uh, con it contains something, right? Uh, there's no vacant spots. Uh, there's no caverns in the body. Mostly. Most. There's always stuff somewhere. Yeah. yeah. All right, Aaron. Okay. Um, so that. Not quite sure we're going with that, but, but it, 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 Aaron it's, wasn't sure if there was a uh, if above the penis there was stuff. I see. Uh, uh, prob uh, prob it sounds like a hernia, frankly, and uh, mm -hmm. so you ought to have a doctor mm -hmm. check it out. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Well, here's the situation. Tom says yes. No, I was going to say I have a question after you guys are done. Go ahead. I thought about something. Well, what is that on your uh, scrotum? There's like a seam on mine, like uh, it was fixed up or something, like, uh, right. and it goes all the way back down around mm -hmm. it. What is that? Is that right? That's What's that supposed to be called? That's, right? where, that's where God stuffed you. Uh, I <laughs> believe that the human was uh, formed uh, like a big sack, uh, and uh, actually your innards, bones, and everything uh, within you was stuffed in through that small opening, and that's where they stitched you up. Uh, Drew, is that? Uh, you know, my, my anatomy has been a long time, but I think it's called the linea albuginea. And that was, that's where you could have been a girl, right? Well, it, we, we are. We all started as girls, right? Right. And, and, then, and then that goes all the way down to the taint. Right. Okay. Right. Well, is there a real name for the taint? Perineum. Oh, yeah, perineum. That's right. Okay. Uh, that's uh, the spot between uh, Scrotenberg and Anusville. Yeah, right. exactly. It's right on the border. Taint there. Scrotenberg, taint Anusville. <laughs> Where are you living? Oh, right, you're right between Scrotenberg and Anusville. <laughs> yeah. Right on the border there. Uh, <laughs> Ain't no big thing. All right, Aaron, what is your real question? Okay, here's the situation. And how did it get to 90 in this place all of a sudden? Is, <laughs> I it, know. is, it, is it? It's that pie. That pie was so good. It was good, huh? <laughs> okay, here's the situation. Uh, I kind of met this girl uh, about a year ago. Uh, I ran into her a couple times in my college, but we never really spoke. We just kind of like gave each other looks and stuff like that. Well, we actually sort of met at a party last year uh, toward around Halloween. And um, ever since then, we kind of gave each other a few looks. And uh, she invited me. We were walking by each other uh, in the hallway one day, and she said, uh, hey, are you going, coming to this party? And I was like, you know, what party? I didn't know what the hell she was talking about. So she invites me to this party, and uh, I showed up. She showed up. She seemed like she was really excited. So, and I was, I've been wanting to meet this girl, but it just had never really happened. All right, and? It went, it went nowhere quick, and um, so, like, I saw her driving to school one day, and I, I left, like, a note on her on her car, like, just as, like, kind of like a secret admirer. <sighs> Hello? Yeah. I left a note on her car, a secret admirer type thing, like, twice in a row. Aaron? Yeah. All right. Okay. Go ahead. This is, Go uh, ahead. This is the worst thing I've ever and, done. And then what happened after you let the note twice in a row? A couple days later. And so, like, this one day that I was trying to run into her, right? You know, I was out by her car. Mm -hmm. and I, what? Hey, listen, Aaron. Yeah. What uh, happened? Did it, Did something sexual happen? Well, I'm, I'm there right now. Okay, buddy. I, I'm at my car, and she's at, she was coming out to her car with her friend. And she saw me and just kind of, like, stared at me, and I got in my car and drove off. Well, ever since then, I haven't, like, she she doesn't really look at me anymore. She doesn't really show me, you know, that, that eye contact. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm just thinking, is there, is there, you guys think there's any chance I could still get with this girl? No, 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 no absolutely, absolutely not. not, no. There's a chance you get arrested, no. though. Yeah. Right, no possible way. Yeah. I don't go in for these Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Drew, the mics are hot, please. Uh,
Tom will uh, answer that off the air. Yeah. Uh, Diamond Limo is the uh, limousine company I'd like to thank for uh, getting Abraham out. is my driver, Abe. Just uh, like in India, but in Hebrew it's pronounced, uh, I should know, that's my father. Abraham. Kill Whitey. No, exactly. <laughs> I forget. All right. Sarah's husband. He's driving you right off a cliff on the yeah. way home. All right. I want to thank Diamond Limo for doing a great job tonight. I want to thank uh, Tom Arnold uh, for being uh, so forthright and uh, so honest. And that's really um, what we want in a guest. And uh, mm. Tom, you're uh, everything uh, we could have hoped for. Thank you. Not you just guys too. Kissing butt. Uh, you're wide open. Uh, mm. You spoke uh, spoke about your experiences and past, as painful as it was uh, for mm -hmm. you. And uh, that's what the show is about, kiddies. So we do thank you. And uh, when the uh, Tom Show starts up on the WB Network in September yeah. on Sunday nights at 9 o'clock, uh, come on back. 8 Central. And uh, <laughs> and plug it just like you did. Yeah, there. exactly. I would be happy to. This is fun. I could do this. We would. Uh, and you guys get paid for doing this? This is fun. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I believe it. Messing with the minds of young people all, all over America? Two nights in a row you'd want money. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew. Uh, wishing uh, the beautiful producer Anne a happy birthday and saying mahalo. This has been Love Line.